My name is Omu, the host of today's talk. Before we get started, please talk to the seventh for food and masala. Thank you. Do you know Dungeons and Dragons? It's a world playing game that has been turned into a adult or child for Christmas parade in Hangzhou. And I would like to know about the charity, so I know I will enjoy today's talk. Today's talk is entitled P2P or PC, Please Plus Public Plus Laboratory Equipment. Today's speaker, JJ, will let you talk about this and you can learn about this location as well as its planning and expressions, along with the broadcast feature for P2P RPC. If you have any questions about today's talk, please write them down on your small sheet of paper. You should have gotten when you arrive. One of our top volunteers can collect it from you and JJ will let you have time to answer your question during the Q&A question, which is led by one of our English speaking volunteers. Now, without any further hesitation, please welcome JJ Bullet with a big round of applause. Is it the question, how do you leverage your hobbies to fuel your passions? How do 
how do you leverage your passions to change the world? You'll notice in both of these questions I use the word leverage heavily, and I'll talk about why I do that later on. So for today, I will talk about what is P2P RPG. I'll talk about why I believe P2P RPG is important. And I'll talk about how I and many others in the former community execute. So this is the question that I will answer uh, for myself in this talk. How did I leverage my hobby of tabletop gaming to fuel my passion for seeing orphans feel acknowledged and valued? So, what is P2P RPG? P2P RPG stands for Pay to Play Role Playing Game. This is the mission statement for P2P RPG. This is sort of the light that guides what we do, where I try to steer the organization. P2P RPG is a charity that leverages the exciting experience of tabletop role-playing games to advocate for populations that can't advocate for themselves. So let's take this apart. P2P RPG is first a charity. It's a way that I and many others try to collect as much money as we can to give it away to noble and worthwhile causes. P2P RPG is a charity that leverages. So anything that has happened in P2P RPG has happened because me and many other of the uh, foreigners in the expat community have put in a lot of work. We've talked to some different people to try to make these sorts of events a reality. We leverage the exciting experience of tabletop role-playing games. I assemble a package of different products that I think people would like to buy around tabletop role-playing games to advocate. So advocacy, uh, to advocate, it basically means you're standing in the place of someone and you're speaking for them because they can't speak for themselves. They lack the power or the authority or the rights or the position. So you're standing for them and speaking for them. And I advocate for populations that can't advocate for themselves. So orphans, widows, people on the periphery of society that don't really get acknowledged. I want to speak for them. I want to help them. And P2P RPG is a way that uh, we can do that. So uh, as I go on, I just want to talk about what is the tabletop role-playing game. So what is a role-playing game? Here are some titles of role-playing games. Dungeons and Dragons. Vampire the Masquerade, Shadowrun, Traveler, Pathfinder, Savage Worlds. These are role-playing games or systems of rules uh, that, uh, that people, when they play tabletop role-playing games, these are the titles that, that they play. These and many others. So if you've ever heard of these titles, these are what I'm talking about when I talk about role-playing games. Obviously, many people have heard of Dungeons & Dragons. It's known almost uh, the world over. So that is an example of a role-playing game. So when you play a role-playing game, you're trying to create a story. A helpful way to think of this is imagine this as a, as a handshake. Two hands. So on one hand, you have the DM or the GM, or the narrator. The narrator in a story is anyone that is not a character. Any words in the story that is not spoken by a character is a narrator. The DM and the GM stand for Dungeon Master or Game Master. The Dungeon Master or the Game Master has three responsibilities to establish the setting for the story. The setting is like where and when does the story take place. Additionally, the Dungeon Master also has to establish the context for the story. So is this a good versus evil kind of story? Is this, uh, is this evil versus good sort of story? Additionally, the Dungeon Master will have to bring the conflict for the story. So the conflict is anything that gets in the way of the players. The players will have a goal, and it is the Dungeon Master's responsibility to bring conflict to put them in the way of the characters. So one hand, on one hand you have the Dungeon Master. Continuing with our metaphor of a handshake, on the second hand you have the PCs. PCs stands for playable characters. These are the characters in the story. The characters bring three things to any game. They bring their imagination. 
In a tabletop role-playing game, anything that happens in the game happens in the imagination of the players and also the dungeon master. The players also bring their unique personalities and traits to the game. They also put these personalities into the characters that they play in the role-playing game. Most importantly, the PCs bring their decisions. So if a dungeon master, if the conflict of the story is there are many orcs or thieves and they're trying to steal something valuable, the PCs have to decide how to stop the thieves. So here's an example. Okay. So this is a picture of an event that uh, P2P RPG did at International Tabletop Day 2015. At this particular event, we made 2.5 million uh, Korean won uh, that we are then able to give to an orphanage so they can buy Christmas presents for their orphans. The man standing here is the dungeon master. The setting you can see here is some kind of an under <coughs> excuse me, underground cavern. The context that he established here is like a good or like kind of like an evil versus other evil sort of a situation. The conflict you see here and uh, uh, around the table also are different monsters that the players have to defeat. Here's another example of a tabletop role playing game. Brian is the dungeon master, and these people here are the players. It's the player's responsibility to decide how they will use their characters' different attributes to accomplish uh, some sort of a goal. So Brian, the conflict he brought was some kind of a puzzle, and the characters had to figure out how to solve the puzzle in order to push the story forward. This is an example of a game that I led. This is a playable character. This, the character's name is Anise, played by my friend Thomas. The conflict before Anise is this giant armored thing. This giant armored thing was trying to kill Anise, and so Anise had to decide, how am I going to not let this thing kill me? And so Anise had to decide how to handle the conflict. And so these are just examples of what you would expect to find when you play a role-playing game. So what is P2P RPG? In one word, it is leverage. That's all it is. It's just leverage. So physics went along here. Uh, does anyone know what these are? Let's start with a triangle. What's this? It's a fulcrum. It's a fulcrum, right. That's exciting. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what this is? It's a lever. Yes, a fulcrum and a lever. The fulcrum for P2P RPGs are just RPGs. They're the things around which I try to gather people... Uh, in, they're the thing around which I try to gather people, like a role-playing game. The lever is P2P RPG itself. What I do is I apply influence and appeal on one side. So this influence and appeal could be I talk to people that I know, that I think would be into the idea of playing in a role-playing game for charity. I ask them if they're willing to pay for a spot at the table, buy different things that I'd sell uh, at the game itself. I also will talk to different artists and try to appeal to them. If you draw a portrait of some of the playable characters, your name will be known a little bit better and you'll be helping out a charity. And this is done to bring some money to give the orphans. So that's what P2P RPG is uh, in just a little uh, picture. It's, uh, it's, it's leverage. That's what it is. So, going back to the questions. How do you leverage your hobbies to fuel your passions? How do you leverage your passions to change the world? Well, I began to figure out how to answer this question myself, and P2P RPG was instrumental in that. Next, why? Why is P2P RPG worth doing? Why do I do P2P RPG? Why do other people do P2P RPG? So, uh, before I can answer this question, I have to ask the question, like, where do, where do my passions come from? Uh, also, why do I care about trying to make sure orphans get Christmas presents? I have two answers to that question. Um, one is personal, one is theological. My wife and I made friends with an orphan in the city of Reno, Nevada, where we're from. She had bounced around from different foster care homes for about the last six years before my wife and I made a, established, were able to establish a relationship with her. 
And the three years that we spent with her, we got to see how, how important it was for her to have someone that would do special things for her. They weren't amazing, the things we, we would do. We would take her to a museum, and that's not something that she would really get a chance to do if we hadn't done those things for her. We'd take her to holiday celebrations, we'd take her to Thanksgiving and Christmas, and these aren't things that she would have had a chance to do if we weren't there to do these things for her. So it's a personal reason that I decided to give money to orphans. The second reason is theological. I became a Christian 12 years ago. There's a verse in the Bible from the book of James, chapter 1, verse 27, and it says this, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. I think many people think that religion is just kind of being good and going to church and things like that, but I think that this verse sort of compels me to think it's something else. It's to visit orphans and widows in their affliction. Uh, when this verse was written, orphans and widows were just people who had no rights in that society. They didn't have any power. They could not own land. They could not make money aside from begging. If somebody did something bad to them, they couldn't you know, really prosecute any rights against that person. Uh, so that's similar to how things are right now. Orphans are a population that are always at the mercy of generous people. Uh, in first world societies like Korea and America and Canada and other places like that, uh, the government will usually provide a stipend for orphans, you know, just to ensure that they have basic necessities. But largely, orphans are always at the mercy of the gen uh, generous people. They will always just kind of be powerless. How else are they going to take care of themselves if no one takes care of them? They don't have anyone to advocate for them. So, uh, also, I just think it's kind of my responsibility. Um, personally, I was very validated by helping uh, the orphan that we knew in America. And I just kind of think it's also my responsibility because I want to see, I want to see the world be a better place, and part of that means that orphans get to feel special. So orphans, there are some reasons that uh, children become orphans. Parents die, very traumatic. Uh, accidental pregnancy. Parents are too poor to care for the child, and so they'll just sort of let the child go to an orphanage, or they're just abandoned. Now all of these, I. I'm not making a judgment about why parents have done this, but these are typical reasons why orphans become orphans. It's never a good thing. It's not like I choose to let you become an orphan because it's great. It's always very traumatic. <clears throat> Secondly, what's difficult for orphans, questions that, questions that are easy for some people to answer based on their uh, upbringing are sort of difficult or impossible for orphans to answer. Where does love come from? How do you answer that question if you don't know what love is or have any idea of where it could come from? Am I safe? Are orphans really safe if they're just kind of always at the mercy of generous people? Uh, am I important? Do I have value? Questions like this aren't always easy for orphans to answer or impossible for them to answer. And so it sort of establishes kind of, uh, you know, just sort of a difficult state for them to live in. So this is what P2P RPG tries to do, uh, just to try to help orphans feel special, and why it's important for them to feel special. So P2P RPG partners with Adopt a Child for Christmas Guangzhou to try to give all the orphans in Guangzhou a Christmas present. That's cool, all right. Christmas is fun. People like presents, but why does that really matter? And here's what I want to uh, how I want to explain it. I want to point out to you the sorts of things that they ask for. Mm -hmm. So with, with the Adopt a Child for Christmas uh, program in Guangzhou, the orphans are given an allotment of 30,000 won, and they get to choose what they will spend this money on. The sorts of things that they end up choosing are things that make them fit in with their peers. This Christmas gift isn't just a Christmas gift. I think it's two things for the orphan. Number one, it's a symbol. It's a symbol that they're worth celebrating. They're worth spending money on because they're important. Number two, I think it also is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for them to fit in with their friends. Orphans oftentimes they have clothes that are just hand-me-downs, donations. They don't really have things that are really nice or important or special. They have basic necessities. They have food. They have clothing. And that's great. But they rarely get the occasion to choose something for themselves. And so the Adopt a Child for, uh, for Christmas program in Guangzhou tries to give them that opportunity. 
Um, and so they'll choose like padded vest, unique low fleeces, just things that get, give them a chance to fit in. Orphanage. I'll just draw your attention to this one. There are a total of 56 orphans at that orphanage. And in order for them to have thir a 30,000 won allotment for each one of them, we have to raise 1,680,000 won. The first event that P2P RPG did raised 1.5 million won. So in our first event, we raised almost enough to cover uh, one entire orphanage to give them Christmas presents. So that's pretty cool. So these are the kind of numbers we're talking about here. And the Christmas present, it's more than just a Christmas present. It's just kind of an opportunity for them to fit in. So how, how do I do P2P RPG? So here's a, here's a question. How did I? <coughs> how did there it is? How did we raise four million Korean won leveraging Dungeons and Dragons? Number one, art. We sold art. I talked to an artist in Guangzhou and other artists in Guangzhou about uh, drawing portraits for the characters. At the at the game, the characters had the opportunity to buy to purchase these portraits for twenty thousand won. I talked to a local uh, Guangzhou artist named Jen Li, and she agreed to, to draw these portraits for us. You'll see in this picture here, there are one, two, three, four, five portraits. We made 100,000 won for orphans by selling these pictures at our P2P RPG game. Uh, and this one over here, additionally, we made another 100,000 won off of these portraits here at our P2P RPG game. Uh, the table behind this table, uh, we made 100,000 won there, and the table behind that one, we made, I think, 60,000 won. So all together with the portraits that we were able to sell, we made 1, 2, 3, uh, 360,000 won just on portraits. So that's really cool. And this is just an example of kind of a question that I asked earlier. How do you leverage your hobbies for your passions? How do your passions kind of change the world? Well, I asked a question, who can do something amazing that I can't? Jen Lee can do pretty amazing work when she draws portraits. So I'll ask if she's willing to draw some portraits for me. She was. And so this is the payoff. <coughs> Secondly, I will sell minis. These are examples of the minis painted by uh, my good friend Paul Starr, who's in the audience today. All of these minis come bone white. They come with no color on them. Paul has to figure out how to leverage his artistic talent to make these little miniatures look like people or things. He does a great job. Uh, each one of these minis I will sell for 20,000 won at the table. So due to Paul's work, we've made about 500,000 won on minis. Which is pretty incredible. So the portraits and the minis, this is, this, these things that I sell, this is how we end up making money for P2P RPG. Three, I also sell some dice bags. Another <coughs> local Guangzhou artist, uh, these are all uh, foreigners, by the way, Jen Lee, Paul Starr, and Stephanie Peters. Um, she knitted these dice bags. I have an example one right here, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, really cool, they have you know, different colors, and they kind of have a neat dragon scale look to them. Uh, Stephanie Peters uh, knitted these dice bags by herself. These dice bags right here, PGP RPG made about 500,000 won on these dice bags. And this is fantastic. So this is just an example of how, how <coughs> others can leverage their hobbies to fuel their passions, and then their passions are trying to bring about some kind of change into the world. So with these here, I was able to raise enough money to um, buy some more orphans some Christmas presents. Lastly, I make some terrain for the game. So very quickly here, this is just a white styrofoam mat that I put some color on. You can see that as I go, I keep adding color to it. Uh, and then I add lightning over here. And I add some stars like this. And then I wanted a place for players to stand. And so I added, uh, put a platform here for them. And I cut it up. I wanted it to look like rock. And so I painted it dark gray, and then I added some more color to it until eventually we have this, which ends up looking like a rock. And so I put it over here, and now this gives a place for the players to play their game. And so the fifth way that uh, I make money doing uh, P2P RPG is the game itself. I sell spots in the game, and people come and they pay to play Dungeons Dragons or other role playing all this money that we gained from selling spots in the game, from selling portraits, selling dice bags, selling minis, all this goes straight to the, uh, has gone currently 
money to straight to the, the adopt a child for Christmas program in Guangzhou. So uh, let's re let's revisit that question. How do you leverage your hobbies to fuel your passions? Well, for me, I was able to answer this question and to figure out what my hobbies are. Definitely Dungeons and Dragons, role playing games. What am I passionate about? I'm passionate about uh, making sure orphans feel valued and acknowledged. And so. How did I end up doing that? I had to figure out who could help me. So I contacted some local Guangzhou artists and I contacted my friend Jordan over here to help me promote the event. So that's how I did it. So I'm going to kind of end on this note here and just leave this question out there for you. Maybe there are different hobbies or passions that you can leverage to do something amazing. It doesn't have to change the world, but maybe there are things that you can do to work some positive.